on the final trading day of March and of the quarter. In fact, the S&P 500 is up nearly 7% in the month of March alone. So what happens next? Can the market rally continue in Q2? Joining us are Matt Roddy. He's Vice President and Portfolio Manager at Rockland Trust and Zachary Carabell, Head of Global Strategy for InvestNet and CNBC Contributor. Uh, guys, you know, the first quarter was incredibly tumultuous, right? I mean, unbelievable volatility. And yet, if you had gone to sleep for the last three months, you wake up on the last day of the quarter, Zachary, you'd say, what? Nothing happened. What happens next for the, the rest of the year? Do you think we're going to have as much volatility or is things going to smooth out? You know, that last segment that Sue did about 5,000 hours turning a building into a video game made me reconsider my thoughts about the year. I figure, you know, the world cannot be falling apart nearly to the degree that we think if we have the amount of free time and excess capital <laughs> to spend doing that. And, you know, I mean, I've been saying for a while, look, it's not just the past three months if you'd gone to sleep. It's really the past 15 months, right? I mean, we've been in these periods of intense volatility in June of last year, in the fall of last year, in January and February of this year. And each time those volatility periods have arise, you get massive commentary about now it's the shoe has dropped, the market's going to collapse, easy money, the Fed. And each time that's been about a three to four week period. And I think unless we find any fundamental deterioration, whether it's earnings, global macro, China, you know, we're kind of in the market we've been in until otherwise notified. And, and we should be aware of the fact that if there is another volatility period, don't be so quick to jump off the cliff. You know, it doesn't mean we're off to the races. I've used two cliches in 20 seconds, but you get the point. Yeah, I do get the point. So, Matt. What, what do you do from here? I mean, what Zachary's saying is that big sell-off, everybody said, oh, this one really is the big sell-off this time around, turned out to be yep. once again, it appears right now, a buying opportunity. What do you do from here? Do you continue to ride this move higher? Yeah, I mean, I'm fairly optimistic in the markets. I mean, what, what I think you're going to see is a lot of uh, earnings estimates were slashed in January and February of this year when everyone was uh, really worried about commodities and the credit issues and currencies uh, and China. And I think what you're going to find, even though that the, that the really reduction in earnings estimates, we're going to see some beating on earnings. And I think that that should help us get through what I think is uh, a period that we've got to digest after that 7% run we've had. I'm optimistic throughout the rest of the year, but I think what we need to do is kind of get through uh, the, the first quarter earnings through April. If they're good, I think it can, we can hold these levels, and I do think they will be good. And then but we can kind of go thing, into the summer on. months. One, one, one thing, though, all those worries that you listed, they still seem to be true. I mean, the only thing I can think of is that Janet Yellen earlier this week kind of paved the way for you not to be worried about those worries anymore, Matt. Yeah, I would disagree. I mean, China's volatility has come down a bit. The commodities have certainly come back some from those real low levels. And I'd say the commodities were a real concern. You know, the benefit to the commodities to the consumer were, were being uh, offset by the, the concerns about credit to the companies. Above $40 a barrel or around $40 a barrel, those credit conditions improve, but the consumer mm -hmm. benefits are still there. So we think that's a good thing. The other thing is the currency. The dollar has not continued to uh, just climb, climb, climb. I mean, that is thanks to Janet Yellen uh, being a little bit more dovish than she was back in, in December. And, and I think that that's a good thing for earnings, too. And it's a yeah. good thing for the American businesses. All right, Matt, and, we're showing people that you like Walt Disney and, and ADP Auto Parts. Zach, did I just interrupt you? You were going to say yeah, something? Yeah, no, just, I mean, two things on this. One, we always have to distinguish between probabilities and possibilities. All those worries will remain as possibilities for the year, maybe for several years. China, the macro environment of Europe, the macro environment of the United States. But I think what we're both trying to point to is the possibility of those things does not then translate into the probability. And then the second point about earnings, you know, last year, last two, three quarters have been negative earnings or, or uh -huh. really depressed earnings. Earnings are a year-over-year -year comparison, and, and later in this year, you're going to have very easy comparisons to surpass. Now, that doesn't mean, that doesn't tell you about the fundamental revenue and or earnings growth of companies, and revenue growth has been modest, but, but it has remained modest. on a relative basis, it yeah. looks better. Got it. Okay, guys, thank you. Matt Roddy is thank with you. Rockland Trust, and Zachary Carabell is with InvestNet. You can go to powerlunch.cnbc.com right now, see why Zachary says volatility is not going away this year. That's powerlunch.cnbc.com.